Bully, or Canis Canum Edit, for those of us across the Atlantic, is an odd game. Selling what nowadays would be an incredibly modest one and a half million copies over its entire lifetime, it wasn't exactly a world dominating success. And yet, despite Rockstar now being more well known for little games like Grand Theft Auto or Red Dead Redemption, Bully is just as fondly remembered by those of us who took up Jimmy's one man rebellion against teachers, jocks, and just about everyone else in the school ecosystem back in 2006. But for the uninitiated, let me give you a quick whistle-stop initiation into the inner workings of Canis Canem Edit. That's Dog Eat Dog, by the way. You had to know your Latin if you wanted to decipher PlayStation 2 titles back in 2008. It's Grand Theft Auto, but it's set in a school, is the simplest explanation I can give you. Obviously, you can't drive, and you definitely don't get access to any guns. Even Rockstar isn't sailing near that level of controversy. But instead of committing crimes, you're flushing heads down toilets, TP in the school quad, and just generally getting up to as much mischief as physically possible. Tackling themes of standing out and sticking it to the man, I'm not gonna lie and say the game didn't cause its fair share of controversy when it came out, not least because you literally play as a school child with free reign to punch, slingshot and swirly just about anyone you want to. And the story was genuinely well put together, exploring themes of pushing back against injustice, the ridiculousness of school cliques and what they represent, and bizarrely, despite what some, who clearly would never play the game and just wanted to complain about it, would have you believe, why standing up to bullies was the right thing to do. So for many of us, it seemed like a dead cert that we would eventually get a follow-up to what, for Rockstar, had essentially become a decently profitable experiment in what they could get away with. Bully was a success, and a remaster dropped for the 360 and Wii to, again, decent critical acclaim, and it looked like a sequel was on the way. But you might have noticed, it's now 2023, and Jimmy is still trapped in the Xbox 360 era. So what the hell happened to Bully 2? And you thought you had to wait a long time for GTA 6, huh? Alright, so it's not a fair comparison, but rumours around a Bully 2 sequel started pretty much as soon as the original game launched. And the first hint that Bully 2 was actually in the works came about a year after the remaster dropped in 2009 when Bully's original composer, Sean Lee, said that he was set to work on it in an interview. A concept art leak in mid-2017 provided us with our first proper evidence that Bully 2 had actually been actively worked on, showcasing a ton of new character ideas and a suburban setting that suggested a summer holiday away from Bullworth Academy was the plan for the sequel. Even more years down the line, leaker Tom Henderson claimed that Bully 2 was expected as a potential surprise reveal at the Game Awards in 2021, but ultimately saying that information is a bit blurry at the moment, and well, it turns out that was a bit of an understatement. And yet, despite continuous disappointment for more than a decade, tiny hints and rumours have continued up to and including this year when a 2022 rumour started doing the rounds all over again after prominent Rockstar Games insider Tez2 teased that maybe they'll reconsider releasing Bully 2 after GTA 6 and that it had been shelved but it went through two years of active development. Remember, that was back in 2022 originally and Christ knows GTA 6 is still a little ways away even if we do finally know it's 100% officially happening. So even if that were the case, Bully 2 by Rockstar's standards is still a good 10 years away. But the annoying thing is, Bully 2 already actually exists, in a manner of speaking. It's just that, for lack of a better phrase, it's essentially been stuck in development hell for coming on a decade and a half. So what the hell went down? Well, like a lot of the big what-ifs of the gaming industry, we once again turn to the hydra that is video game devs being bought out by publishers. You see, although Rockstar Vancouver was the original team behind Bully, the sequel was initially passed on to another, Mad Doc Studios. Now, to be fair to Mad Doc, this isn't a slight on them. They'd already been working on the Scholarship edition of Bully, that remaster that made its way onto Xbox, for a long time before they were acquired by Rockstar and renamed to Rockstar New England. And with the Scholarship edition in the can, they quietly got to work on Bully 2. Quickly though, it became clear that despite the team's best efforts, it was going to be difficult to stand out in a company that has the golden goose of Grand Theft Auto laying its eggs all over the place. A while back, Game Informer spoke to former employees from Rockstar's New England studio and revealed an absolute ton of details about a game they worked on for around 18 months before other projects eventually took priority and studio momentum just eventually completely faltered despite having somewhere between 50 to 70 people working on the game at one point. And the even more annoying thing is that plenty of the ideas that Rockstar New England were trying to work into Bully 2 would eventually become critically acclaimed in future Rockstar properties that were eventually released, including Red Dead 2 and Max Payne. Just like the original Bully, there was a lot of focus on Jimmy's character and the NPCs that he interacts with. The dev team were going above and beyond in their use of AI and were looking to make NPCs that would remember what the player did. If you pulled a prank on a neighbour, they would remember. 
If you were nice and mowed their lawn for cheap, you'd get positive feedback for that. The design was made to go beyond the usual copy-paste voice lines and cookie-cutter interactions of those early 2010 era games. Not only that, but the sandbox map you'd get to play in was going to be a massive step up as well, landing in at around three times the size of the original Bullsworth Academy and surrounding areas map, with the devs apparently initially aiming for Vice City level scope allowing players to walk into every single building in the game, something that at the time was very much not on the cards, even for a game the size and scale of GTA. To quote the devs, if you could see it, you could go into it. And sure, it's nothing much to boast about nowadays, really, but back then, this would have been absolutely game-changing. You have to remember that the original Bully launched between GTA San Andreas and GTA 4. There was a lot of fast developments going on in game dev during that time. And it's easy to see the influence of these ideas over games like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Arthur Morgan's Honor System that changes his behaviour depending on how you interact with NPCs. Everything that was pitched was eventually fully realised in a slice of Bully 2 that was created and made playable for devs, allowing them to run around the world and interact with it a little, including some fully playable missions coming in at about six to eight hours of content. But sadly, that's as far as Rockstar New England got. Despite the best efforts of Rockstar's newest and brightest, despite a playable demo, despite active interest from the dev team to make it work, the project was quietly canned sometime in 2010 after around two years of work. Problems around work culture have been thrown around by the former devs, with the studio's work ethic changing massively almost overnight to a very much more crunch-based approach. But as development of Bully 2 stalled, Rockstar's other games flourished. 2010 would see Red Dead Redemption launch players to the Wild West to worldwide acclaim, and another golden goose was born. More and more of the 50 to 70 devs who had initially started work on Bully 2 were drafted in to keep the development of other, more lucrative and high-priority projects ticking over. Some of the team were pulled in to help out with the story expansions for GTA 4 and Red Dead, the latter selling 1 million copies in just its opening salvo, and more than 50 million copies later, it seems like a decision that was ultimately justified. Bully simply wasn't something Rockstar could give the same amount of resources to. So whether it was Rockstar's priorities, an unfortunate change in work culture, or just simple economic reality, or in all honesty, an unhealthy mix of all three, we were doomed to never get Bully 2. But stranger things have happened. According to the devs that worked on it, at least as far as they're aware, Rockstar still has that slice of Bully 2 tucked away in a vault somewhere. The concept art that leaked still exists. The work into AI and game mechanics still exists. With the development of GTA 6 finally rounding up after close to a decade of rumour mills and leaks, and not much sign of another Red Dead ambling around the corner anytime soon, maybe, just maybe, there's a chance Rockstar dust off their old textbooks and school photos and give Bully the graduation many feel it deserves. But what do you think? Is there a place for Bully 2 in today's gaming landscape? Is it even a risk you think Rockstar would take? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments, and if you're in the mood for a little bit more gaming history, check out this video, where we talk about why we never got The Simpsons Hit and Run 2.